Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel on Engineering Mathematics. In this video, I am going to discuss a numerical technique called as Regular Falsi Method. This method is also known as False Position Method. This method is useful to solve algebraic and transcendental equations numerically. Prerequisite to this method consists of knowledge to algebraic and transcendental equations solution to these equations as well as interval of the solution. All these topics are already covered in my previous video. Link of that video is given in the description box. Now let us proceed with this method. Aim of this method is to solve algebraic or transcendental equation p and x is equal to 0. Following are the steps involved in this method. Step 1 says find any two points say x1 and x2 such that p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign due to which we will come to know that the interval x1 and x2 in which the solution to this equation p and x is equal to 0 lies. Now in step 2 we find the next approximate solution x is equal to x3 using the formula x3 is equal to x1 into p and x2 minus x2 into p and x1 whole divided by p and x2 minus p and x1. This formula can also be written as x1 y2 minus x2 y1 whole divided by y2 minus y1 where y1 is p and x1 y2 is p and x2. Similarly one can say that y n is equal to p and x n. Now we proceed to step 3. In step 3 if we see that x3 is such that p and x3 and p and x1 both have same sign then we replace x1 by x3 and we repeat step 2. Let me show you a diagram with the help of which you can understand this step. Assume this is the curve p and x. Since this crosses x axis at this point, so this will be its solution which is to be find. This is our x1 and x2 we chose such that p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign. Using the formula in step 2, we have found x3. Now, according to step 3, if x3 is such that p and x3, that is this point, and p and x1 both have same sign, then we replace x1 by x3. So, our next interval of solution is x3, x2, since we have replaced x1 by x3. Now, we call this x3 as our new x1, and we repeat step 2. It might happen that instead of x3 coming onto this side of the curve, x3 may come onto this side. So in that case, p and x3 and p and x2 will have same sign. Then we replace x2 by x3 and we repeat step 2. This is what I am saying. If x3 appears on the right side of the curve, then p and x3 and p and x2 will have same sign. In that case, we replace this x2 by x3. So the solution interval will be x1, x3. So x3 is our new x2. Then we repeat step 2. Finally, we repeat step 2 and 3 to find the next better approximate solution until we find the desired accuracy in the solution. That means we stop finding the solution in further iterations if the solution in successive iterations are matching up to few decimal places. Now let us use these steps to find out solution to algebraic and transcendental equations. This is our first example. Here we are asked to solve using regular falsi method the equation x cube minus 9x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is an algebraic equation. Let us proceed to the solution. Here we first denote p and x is x cube minus 9x plus 1. Now we proceed to step 1 according to which we have to find out x1 and x2 such that p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign. This one can do using trial and error method. I mean you have to find two nearby integers such that p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign. Because if you choose integers which are far away from each other, you will need more iterations to find out a solution. So let us choose x1 is equal to 2 and x2 is equal to 3 and substitute these values of x over here. 
so we find p n x one is minus nine and p n x two is one. You can pause the video and check this calculation. So clearly, p n x one is negative and p n x two is positive. That means they are opposite in sign. So solution to this equation lies in the interval two comma three. Now we proceed to step two. According to step two, we have to find the better approximate solution from this interval using the formula x3 is equal to x1 y2 minus x2 y1 divided by y2 minus y1. Here y2 means p n x2 and y1 means p n x1. After substituting these values, we found x3 to be 2.9. So this is the better approximate solution lying in this interval two comma three. Now we will check what is the sign of value of p n x three. So here we find p n x three is minus zero point seven one one. Recall that p n x one was minus nine and p n x two was one. Clearly, sign of p n x three and p n x one are matching or same. Clearly, sine of p n x one and p n x three are same. Therefore, we should replace x one by x three. So, our new interval in which solution will lie will be two point nine comma three. As I said, our new x one will be two point nine. Now we have to repeat step two. I am going to write further calculation in a calculation table. This is that table. Here are the column headings: iteration number, values of x1, x2, pn x1, pn x2, x3, and pn x3. Iteration numbers will start from one. Here we have already assumed x1 to be two, x2 to be three. We have found pn x1 to be minus nine, pn x2 to be one. Pn x1 is less than zero, pn x2 is greater than zero. So solution lies between two and three. We found that solution is x three is two point nine. Then we found p n x three, which is minus zero point seven one one, which is less than zero. Since signs of p n x one and p n x three are same, we replace x one by x three. So here we should write two point nine. X two will remain same. Now we calculate p n x one, which we have already did over here. Minus zero point seven one one. We will write it over here. P n x two will remain same because x two is same. Now we find x three using the formula mentioned. So we found x three to be two point nine four one six. Then we find p n x three using p n x expression. So we find p n x three to be minus zero point zero two zero seven, which is less than zero. Since signs of p n x one and p n x three are same, we should replace this x one by x three. So new x one is two point nine four one six. X two will remain same. We take this p n x three value over here. P n x two's value will remain same. Now using the formula of regular falsi method, we find out x three. So we find x three to be two point nine four two eight. After finding x3, we find out p n x3, which is minus 0.00034, which is again less than zero. And since p n x1 and p n x3 have same sign, we should replace x1 by x3. So new x1 is 2.9428. X2 will remain same. p n x1 will be now minus 0.00034. p n x2 will remain same. Next, we find x3 using a regular falsi method, which we found 2.9428, and p n x3 is minus 0.00034. After this, I stopped finding next iteration because I see solution in successive iteration is matching up to four decimal places. So this solution obtained is correct up to four decimal places. So we say solution to this given equation using regular falsi method is x is equal to 2.9428. I hope guys you understood this method and example. Let me show you one more example. Here 
we are asked to solve using regular falsi method equation x e raised to x minus cos x is equal to 0. This time, this is a transcendental equation. Let us proceed to the solution. First, we write what is p and x here. Here, p and x is x e raised to x minus cos x. Now, since here we have trigonometric function, we will keep our calculators on radian mode to find the value of p and x. Now, we go for step 1. According to step 1, we have to find out x1 and x2 such that p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign. For that, I chose x1 to be 0 and x2 to be 1. Now, let's see what is p and x1, that is p and 0. So, here we see p and 0 is 0 into e raised to 0 minus cos 0, which is minus 1. Similarly, you can find out p and x2. I see p and x2's value is 2.178. So clearly p and x1 and p and x2 are opposite in sign. Therefore, the solution lies in the interval 0, 1. Now let us proceed for step 2. In step 2, we will use the formula of regular falsi method to find out better approximate solution, say x3. x3 is given by x1 into p and x2 minus x2 into p and x1 divided by p and x2 minus p and x1. All these values are there in step 1. So, after substituting these values in this formula, we find x3 as 0 0.3147. This is the approximate solution to the equation. To find out the better approximate solution, we have to go for next iteration. For that, we will first check what is the value of p and x3. This is p and x and this is x3. After substituting x3 over here, we get p and x3 is minus 0 0.5199. Recall that our p and x1 was minus 1 and p and x2 was 2.178. Since signs of p and x3 and p and x1 are same, we should replace x1 by x3. So our new x1 is 0 0.3147. Therefore, now solution lies in the interval 0 0.3147, 1 as our new x1 is 0 0.3147. Now we proceed for further calculation, but these calculations we are going to write in a calculation table. Let's draw that calculation table. This is the calculation table. In iteration number 1, we have already chosen x1 to be 0, x2 to be 1. These are the values of p and x1, p and x2 and x3. We found sign of p and x3 and p and x1 are same. So, we should replace x1 by x3 in next iteration number 2. So, in iteration number 2, our new x1 will be 0 0.3147. x2 will remain same. p and x1 will be then minus 0 0.5199. p and x2 will remain same because x2 is same. Next, we find out x3 using regular falsi method. We found it is 0 0.4467 and p and x3 is minus 0 0.2035. Once again, sine of p and x1 and p and x3 are same. So, we should replace x1 by x3 which is 0 0.4467. So, in next iteration, this is our x1. x2 will remain same. Accordingly, we will write p and x1 and p and x2 values. Then we find x3 using the formula of regular falsi method. We found it is 0 0.494. Then we proceed to find p and x3. We see it is minus 0 0.0708. Since once again its sign is same as p and x1, we should replace x1 by x3. So we find in fourth iteration x1 is 0 0.949. Accordingly, we'll do further calculations. I'm just scrolling down those calculations. You can pause the video and check these calculations on your own. So after these eight iterations, we see that solution is matching up to three decimal places. Here you can see in iteration number seven, solution is 0 0.5175. And in iteration number eight, solution is 0 0.5177. So, these two solutions are matching up to three decimal places. So, we can say solution to the given equation is 
zero point five one seven and is correct up to three decimal places. I hope guys you understood this method called as regular falsi method to solve algebraic and transcendental equations. In my next video, I'll come up with more such interesting topics. Till then, keep watching my videos. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.